Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Octopath Traveler 2, and today we're going to be talking about how to get your hands on a very, very powerful sword, which is going to be the Forbidden Blade. This particular sword, at the time of recording, I can't say for sure whether or not this would be considered the best one, but comparing it to Octopath Traveler 1, the most powerful sword in that game had a physical attack bonus of 300 plus, and this particular weapon has 322, as well as a bonus to speed. That being said, this also does have a negative quality to it, because it is a forbidden weapon. The negative quality is that there is a chance that the enemy target will have their physical attack power raised. However, because of how powerful this sword is, you should be clearing out enemies relatively quickly, or in the very least, you're using the sword to break their defenses, and the additional speed really helps a lot for predicting your turns. So, this particular sword can be found in the Forsaken Graveyard. This is a danger level of 40, very intimidating, but if you find yourself in a position where you are clearing out the Chapter 2s of at least half the cast, you should have plenty of job points saved up and experience points to find yourself in a position where you can easily clear out the boss that is guarding this particular weapon. You'll have to fight against the boss with 55,000 HP, which seems like a lot, but with the setup that we are using for today's video, you should be able to clear it out with no problems. In fact, the setup that I have, it isn't going to take very, very much. You don't have to worry about having the best equipment. You just want to make sure that every character that you are using has over 800 HP. And that's all you really need to worry about. I would say that as far as essential goes, Particio is going to be essential for the setup that we were doing. Uh, don't worry if any of the characters that you're seeing in today's video are not the character that you started out with. As long as you have Particio and Ochets on your team, you should be doing just fine. If you started off with any of those characters, uh, more power to you. I would also recommend having Throne and or Temenos on your team, simply because they contribute greatly to maxing out the damage that we can to clear out this boss as soon as possible. Theoretically, you should be able to kill this boss in two turns or less, uh, especially because we're going to be manipulating turns with Ochat's Hunter ability, which is Leg Hold Trap. Okay, so going into the equipment real quick, don't worry about high damage. We do not care about having high damage weapons. What we do care about is HP. So any of your um, accessories, any of your armor, shield, anything that gives you more defense and more HP is exactly what you want to be stacking up to keep yourself alive. Because honestly, the Forsaken Graveyard in and of itself is far more dangerous than any anything that the boss can do. The boss is intimidating, but we do have healing items available to us and we have very broken abilities at our disposal. So quickly going into the skill setup, we're not going to be combining or mix and matching. We're just going to be using the jobs that the characters have started out with. In particular, the uh, merchants for Particio, you really just want to have full power. This is a very, very good ability. And even then, this isn't very essential. If you have his latent power saved up, and then you take it to the boss fight, you don't even need this. But it is good to have just in case, and it's just a good ability overall, because it lets you have full latent power at the start of every battle. And in Particio's case, that means max BP as soon as you press the button. This is extremely good because this means that you can have max boosts as soon as you want it in a single turn twice if you compare this, if you combine this with Elfric's Blessing, which is a good thing to have, but again, not very essential because we are going to be manipulating the turns that the boss has, but this could come in handy in later setups if you find yourself fighting against more challenging foes. It's just a good thing to have around in general. So, going to the rest of the support skills, not really much else that needs to be said. Uh, I would say that Evil Ward is a good thing to have because it lets us run away from enemies more easily when we're on our way to the boss. Another thing to point out, too, is that Throne and Temenos have passive talents that give them advantages when they are fighting enemies in the dark or at nighttime. This is very, very important because with Throne, she has buffs that are applied to the entire party at nighttime, and then Temenos has debuffs as applied to the enemy, uh, which makes surviving enemy encounters very easily. It gives you more of a safety net for when you're trying to run away from enemies, but then the, uh, the attempts fail, which is part of what the uh, evil ward is for, for the cleric class. Other than that, though, don't have to worry about it too much. Uh, Throne, her particular ability, 
is the incidental attack. This is extremely useful because we're going to be using her primarily for Armor Corrosive and Shackle Foe. Shackle Foe debuffs her attack power, Armor Corrosive debuffs her defenses. This is very, very good because we're going to be taking advantage of hired help from Particio. When you have the Hired Help, you will lower their defenses, and then they will use physical attack power, and they should be hitting anywhere between 7,000 to 9,000 damage at maximum boosts. This is extremely, extremely important for making sure we kill the boss as soon as possible before he recovers from his break. You should be able to kill this boss only in a single round of break, because this boss has 55,000 HP, and worst case scenario, you'll be hitting 28,000 per use of the uh, hired help, and then you're going to be using a, a second time to clean up whatever is left over, and honestly, the likelihood of you hitting only 28,000 is unlikely, so uh, yeah, knock yourself out. Other than that, though, uh, any other character that you want to switch out for, in assuming that there are characters that are not on the screen right now, don't fret, there is plenty of wiggle room, not to mention that the weaknesses of this boss are uh, weapons or elements that are available to every character in the party one way or the other, so yeah, feel free to switch out any of them, just make sure you have Particio onto your team. Temenos is almost as essential, simply because he's a cleric, he can heal people and revive people without needing to use up your items. Other than that though, very, very easy to do. I just want to quickly clear up as well that this is south of the Montwise area. This is on the far east of the continent, and this is where Hikari needs to go for his chapter 2. You should know where this is, but it's also just to the east of the Flame Church area, uh, near the um, like Clock Bank, all these little areas, just the far east. This is exactly where you want to go. Take, an L um, take a ladder down, and you'll find yourself in the Forsaken Graveyard. So, uh, not really much else that needs to be said. You will want to have at least one pomegranate, just in case. It's not essential, but it's good to have or expend one of your pomegranates because giving Particio as much BP as possible at the beginning is very, very beneficial just for the purposes of taking advantage of your turns early on. So let's go ahead and make our way down into the Forsaken Graveyard. Alright, so I want to mention again that at nighttime enemies will be more powerful, but you have advantages from both Throne and Temenos. Uh, put up your map, just make sure you have the moon icon and you can get going. Take a save if you need to, if you end up wiping unfortunately, if you're fighting this very early on, you could just reload your save and you'll be just fine. Generally speaking, with uh, not running, you should only really encounter enemies maybe three times? five times if you're unlucky, but generally speaking though, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. Just make a beeline, follow the path that you are watching right now, and you should be able to get there in no time at all, with very, very little interruptions. And as long as you don't accidentally miss a turn, you don't need to worry about backtracking and taking any additional steps. All right, so we have two encounters right now. We can flee, and all the enemies are blinded as a result of Temenos' debuffs, so even if these guys manage to get some attacks, there's a decent chance they will miss, or in the very least, they will um, just do less damage. So here we go. Come on, Particio, your only hope. All right, most of the time with the Evil Ward, you would need to do maybe a minimum... Um, sorry, not a minimum, but like, generally speaking, you'll probably like need to attempt twice. You shouldn't need to attempt three times. If you attempt three times, there's a good chance that you're going to wipe. So in which case, just reload the save and try again. But that stuff happens very unlikely. And since we have Temenos on our team, we can heal and revive anyone that is left over. He also has the support skill that revives him in the middle. Uh, if he dies once, he has one more additional revive chance. So again, here we go. Hopefully people will start missing. That blinds will actually do something. Come on, blind. Okay, that's really, that's a real bummer. Come on, come on, blind. Sh vindicate me, blind. <laughs> All right. Okay, we can try it again with Throne again. Unable to escape. Okay, so this is where things can get a little bit dicey. Uh, if we find ourselves in a position where someone dies, that's actually kind of okay, because if... Ochet dies, for example. We can revive him with uh, Temenos. But if Temenos is dead, we may actually have to uh, we may have to actually reset because I don't want to spend an all up on him. Are you kidding me? All right, so no one died that time. That's completely okay. Heal wounds cost a fair amount of SP, but we don't need to worry about Temenos's SP that much. He has so much to begin with, but we don't even need to worry about it. 
Okay, and there is the treasure chest. What I would do for good luck is just hit that trigger, make the sun rise, and use your magical powers to make the moon rise again. And this will give us all the advantages of debuffing the boss on his first turn and giving us a buff on our first turn. The sense of danger is overwhelming. Of course we want to proceed. I mean, like, when you say overwhelming, then by all means. Okay, so here is the Devourer of Dreams. He has a very, very fun mechanic called Invitation to Dream. This prevents us from seeing who goes next. That's okay. We're completely at peace with this. Do you know why? Because when you don't see what you're doing, sure, that does make things a little bit intimidating at first, but every character that we have has a specific job, and because we are manipulating the turns, it does not matter what order our turns go in. I'm going to use the Merchant skill to donate BP to, to Ochet. Only need to give him the one. I don't even need to give pomegranates, really. And then I'm going to use a Shackle Foe, just in case. If he does a physical attack, then that is going to lower the damage that he does, making it easier to survive. I forgot to switch the sword. That was a big mistake on my part. But you know what? That's fine. I am going to use the Mystical Staff. Mystical Staff, it attacks twice, and that is, and this guy has a uh, weakness to stabs. So this should bring down his count at least once. He does have a tendency to miss, unfortunately. And then I am going to use Leg Hold Trap. And that is going to manipulate his turns that he will only be able to act twice at the very, very end. Okay, so here comes the darkness. So scary. Super, super scary. I forgot to switch the sword this time. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give the... Hmm. Okay, here's what's going to happen. We can actually finish this off relatively quickly. I am going to use the latent power, then an armor corrosive. If we're lucky, she'll do an incidental attack. That will lower it. Nope. That's okay. Here we go. Three hits from the sword. Full boost. And we are going to go four hits from the axe. Let's see what else we got. Um, I will go ahead and I am going to... I actually don't need to really do anything for this, do I? I think we should be pretty much good to go. Okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to donate a BP. Just for fun, to Temenos. This was completely unnecessary, but we can actually finish this. So here we go. We didn't even need the Alphix Blessing for this. Oh, well, okay. Here, here's the deal. Because we have... I could use an Energizing Pomegranate. Hmm. Yeah, okay. You know what, maybe, because okay, I didn't want to risk the Mystic Staff attacking, uh, I didn't want to risk it attacking twice but missing once, so we'll just go ahead and use the Armor Corrosive. Alright, this is going to actually be very, very helpful for us, because here's the deal, after this turn, if we don't kill him now, he is going to retaliate and probably end up killing Ochet. We don't want that. Use the Merchant Skills, we're going to use the Hired Help and go for the Beastlings. Veteran Soldiers do a lot of damage, but unfortunately it's kind of overkill and too expensive for us. I mean, like, th we can't afford the 30,000s, but the amount of damage that these guys do is so much that it actually goes over the cap and we can't raise the cap just yet at, you know, at the current time of recording. So we can go for the Beastlings. The Beastlings hit anywhere between 7,000 to 9,000. So worst case scenario, they hit 7,000 four times for 28,000 damage in total which is more than half of the HP that this guy has. So we're gonna go ahead and use the Beastlings. Summon the cat girls! Oh yeah, look at look at those 9,000s. And then we're gonna use Temenos, Elfric's Blessing. Use it for Particio. And he will act again at the end of the turn, which is exactly what we want. We're gonna use Latent Power, max amount, hired help, more cat girls. More cat girls is exactly what the doctor ordered. And just like that, we were able to kill that guy. That could have gone a little bit smoother. I wasn't 100% sure what to do here. We probably didn't even need to use the pomegranate. I should have been smarter with that too. I honestly should have just donated BP 
I didn't want to risk... The thing is, though, I didn't want to risk using the, uh, the Divine Staff because, you know, we saw that it has a chance of missing. I'd rather the guaranteed hit from the, uh, from the boost, the boost, and just let him hit twice. That should have been okay. But, uh, yeah, just like that, get ourselves a Revitalizing Jam, and we can finally claim our prize, which is going to be... Da -da -da -da, Forbidden Blade! Now, the Forbidden Blade, I mentioned before, it has a sizable 322. It is one of the Forbidden Weapons, so it is um, not necessarily the most powerful weapon, but certainly up there. Uh, so if you need a high damage sword, but you don't want to worry too much about uh, any negative effects that it might have, you can definitely make use of it. The additional speed is quite good, and the ability to raise the target's physical attack, uh, it might not seem... You know, honestly, it may seem like a negative effect, but because it's a slim chance, I like those odds. I'd rather use this just for the means of giving myself just that extra amount of damage and then going for the break. And then I do try to play Octopath Traveler in a way where the moment there's a break, I should kill them before they have a chance to retaliate. And that's exactly why I'm going to be giving the Forbidden Blade to Throne. And uh, what a blade it will be. What a blade it will be. Anyways, guys, thank you very, very much for watching. I quite enjoyed playing Octopath Traveler some more, and I hope to continue doing so as we start to unlock more classes, getting more of the advanced classes along the way. I hope you guys stay tuned for that. And uh, yeah, please enjoy what we have in store for us. It's going to be glorious. Octopath is back, and I am here for it all. I'll see you guys next time.